Okay, uh, so this was this is our first lab. Um, so let's we are going to create a, a single table in post jerry circle. Uh, so because our table database is set on AWS cloud, so the only thing you need is to download and install the PG admin. And um, that is an GUI for uh, graphic user interface for the post jerry circle. Uh, so once you have downloaded and install that one. So it you can download and install that one either on Windows or Mac computer. And then you can open that one. So now I'm using uh, 4 a 4 version. Uh, I guess there are uh, there is a newer version that available. So now you can see it is now being started. Uh, Peach Admin is a browser based tool. So once it is started, uh, uh, it will open your default browser. And then the first thing that they ask is that to enter your last password. So this is a password that you can use your own password. So the password is used. So once you set a password and next time when you open the PG admin and reset, retype the password, you don't need to type password for all your connected servers. However, if this is your first time, you just simply have to type your default, uh, your password that you like, and next time you just repeat, retype the first password. If you forget, forgot your password, you can just simply reset your password. By doing that, unfortunately, uh, uh, you will reconnect with all the servers that you have connected. So let me type my existing password. This is different from your database password. So this is just your PG admin password. And I hit OK. Uh, and now you can see I have already have two servers that connected. The first one is my local uh, post circle database. So if you only install PG admin, you if you do not in, didn't install the uh, database, then you will not see this server or if you open it, it, it will not be responding. Uh, the second server is our class server. So that is connected to the uh, AWS database. And I used my uh, admin uh, password and also uh, username. Uh, so you can see here I have the databases. So because I saved a database, uh, the password uh, to this PG admin, so I can connect this one without typing the uh, the password to this server. Okay, so let's connect to our to your uh, database to, to the same server, but let's connect with your password. So you can simply right click this one. And by the way, I, I also have a more concise tutorial on YouTube. So if you want to see how to create uh, your own database on AWS, or if you want to see a, a faster, <laughs> a more quick tutorial, you can check my uh, YouTube channel and you can find out that tutorial. Uh, so this one, I will go very slow so that uh, we can do it together because this is an online class. So create, and then we are not going to create a server actually, we are going to connect to the server on AWS. So here you want to give the name, so the name that uh, on your local page admin. So I just call it demo account for my i340. And the most important part is that you need to provide in a connection. So where is your database that is hosted? Um, so my data, so I will provide the URL on Canvas. So you will find so check Canvas for the URL. And also your username. So the username and also password will is on Canvas. So if you go to Canvas, uh, go to people groups, and you will see that you have already been assigned to one of the group. So if you see if you has been assigned to the group one, and your username will be JP1. Okay, so if you have been signed to group two, and your username will be JP2. And the password, to find out the password, you just click this group, and you will be able to view your group page, and you go to your group page, and see 
the announcement in your group page. Okay, it is not the announcement of the class. Uh, it is announcement within your group page. So that announcement is only available to you. And in that announcement, you will see the password for your username. Okay, so your username is JP1 or JP2 or JP20. Your password is unique, so you have to find out that password in your announcement page uh, in your user group. So here, my username is demo, and you can leave your port and also date, maintain database as a default. And I just type the password that has been assigned to my account. And I want to save this password. So next time when I, when I connect to page admin, I type the master password and I just can connect directly to this, uh, to my server. Okay. Uh, so now you can see uh, my demo, my server is connected. Um, so if I open that one, uh, you can see that I have two databases, actually three databases. Uh, the one is a DVD rental, so that is a demo database, and we are good. We are, well, I will mention this one later. Um, the second one is post GRE as database, so that is default database. The third one, we don't have access, access to that one, um, so that contains the metadata. So let's open the post GRE as database. And here you can see that uh, we have several schemas. So remember that schemas as a logic container that uh, to organize your tables. So if you open schema, and you can see we have, I created schema for each single user. So if your JP1, just open your schema. And if your, if your username is JP20, open your JP20 schema, OK? You don't have access to the other schemas. Uh, you can view the tables, but you cannot access their data. Uh, so since I logged in as demo user, so I open my schema. Uh, so you can see uh, we we can you can see the functions. So the function is a piece of the SQL code. Uh, so right now it is empty. Uh, and uh, I have tables, so it is also empty. So tables are the, uh, where we uh, we maintain our data. Uh, you can define the domains and you can also create the views. So right now it is empty. OK. Uh, so there are also other uh, features. Features. Uh, the table space is where actually uh, the data is being saved. OK, so uh, it is saved in the AWS uh, RDS uh, cloud server and the users. So you can see we so those are the users that I created for this class. So I'm use I'm the demo user, and so those are your all your usernames. So each user has a different password. Okay, uh, so let's create our first table. So for lab one, so lab one we are going to create a teacher table that contains uh, the instructors instructor's information in this I program. So let's right click the table and say create and you can create a table. OK. Uh, so the first thing you have to do is you have to give the name. So it is teacher. OK, you have to give the name for the teacher and you can see you are the owner of this table and that is in this demo schema. And next, we can go to the columns. So we can define multiple columns um, uh, for, your, for this table. OK, uh, so you can see there is a plus icon here. And let's say we want to add our first column. And the, our first column, I will use, normally that will be your primary key. So I will use email. So if you think about that for professors, so which column do you want to use as a primary key? So which column will be definitely unique? So I would use email because each individual professor has a unique JMU email. And the data type. 
so there are a lot of different type of data that you can select. Um, so for this one, because I know I'm those uh, emails will be uh, characters, so I choose characters, and I choose character varying. So that means um, uh, you, they don't have the unique uh, the fitted lens. So uh, so someone may have a longer email address. Someone has a a short email address, uh, so that is okay. So, um, and the length. So here the length is that. So what is the maximum length for your email column? So if you think about, okay, so in reality, so how how long a person's email address can be? So if you give a very very long huge length, and you're wasting your storage. Uh, if it give you two small lines, then if someone have a very longer email address, then that cannot be saved. Okay, uh, so I would guess okay. So fifty probably will be a good one. And I okay, I say okay, this will be my primary key. So I check yes. And remember, you can only have one primary key. And next, uh, I want start the professor's name. And again, those are characters. Um, and also, I'm using character varying. And you can guess, OK, so how long a professor name can be? So I just gave it, OK, 100. OK. And I also say, OK, it, it is. Um, and also, I also think that, OK, so we must have a name for this record. So because our professor uh, definitely have a name. Um, and also, it is required. So you must put your name. Um, the second is office. So where's office is located. And again, because that contain numbers and also letters. So I just want to use character varying again. Um, because GME has a very pretty standard uh, naming policy. So I think 10 will be definitely fine. And I think that is also required because our professor has a unique office, uh, has an office, and so I think that is not now. Okay, um, so that is my design. Uh, you can have your own design um, as long as you think that it makes sense. So, for example, if you think you cannot find out some professor's office and you want to leave that as an empty, so you can choose that. You can uncheck that one. OK. Uh, the next is the research interest. OK, um, because for the research interest, so well, some professors have a very long paragraph. So talking about their rich research and some professors, they have uh, just one or two, a few sentences. Uh, so, uh, so it's hard to guess. OK, so uh, how long the characters will be. So in this case, I'm going to use a text. So that uh, a, uh, a special data type that allow a very, so allow you to put a, a relatively longer paragraph. So so that is text. And finally, I want to say that how number of the courses that the professor is teaching. So I use number of courses. Um, I would highly recommend use uh, underscore to separate the, the the words in your name. So do not use spaces. Um, and that should be an integer. And and when you type integers, you can see it can be a big integer and also it can be a small integer. Uh, because the number of courses are very, very small, so I, I will use a small integer. Okay. And I think the interest and also a cost number are not required, so I would say okay. I'm happy leave that as uh, so. Not now. I I will uncheck those two. Okay, so let's try some constraints. So constraints are some techniques that can make sure that uh, um, that uh, to make sure the data integrity. So here you can define. You can see if primary key is already defined. We don't have any other tables, so I will leave the foreign case as uh, empty. Uh, let's first let's say unique uh, constraint. So 
fortunately, in JMU, each faculty member uh, has a unique standalone office. So let's say, okay, so each each faculty must have a unique um, office number. Otherwise, there might be a problem. Uh, okay, uh, so for the unique, you have defined the rules. Okay, so I say, okay, uh, unique office. So the name of this constraint. Um, sorry, I just want the first one. And then you can add it, that one. Okay, so the name is unique office. And if you go, you can leave, you can define more comments because, okay, uh, each has an unique office. Um, I cannot type correctly. Uh, okay, and so let's use an end score to separate the words just in case. And go to the definition. You can see that you have you. I haven't specified the columns. So here you have to tell. Okay, so which column should be unique? So I say okay, the office should be unique. Uh, apparently, you can you can choose a combination of those values to be unique and apparently you can also you see choose the other options but here this is fine okay so the office should be unique and then let's say we want to define a check so check is is a, a very simple uh, function that um, allow you to uh, do some very simple checks. So, for example, I want to say, okay, so all professor must teach, teach cannot teach more than five courses because I know that at, at some rules that in GMU each professor will not teach more than five courses. So, I think so number courses less than five. Okay. And you can here you can add more details. So um, that uh, so why do you think this is a reasonable uh, constraints? And then here this is the definition. Okay. Uh, so as number of the courses is oh, actually number of costs is less than five. Okay. Uh, so then if you type more than five and then you'll have error uh, because in GMU so that's really depending on the the project so in GMU uh, so each professor teach less than definitely less than five okay uh, and also there are other advanced parameters like partition so partition normally to be a feature of non-relational database but now uh, as uh, post circle also support partition uh, parameters, so other um, uh, advanced functions and also security. So you can share your tables with other users if you like. And SQL. So this is also one of a nice feature of the PG admin. So you can see here you create your create your um, table manually which it is easier for you to understand. But here they also create a standard SQL comments for you. So here you can see uh, if you want to repeat uh, creating this table and you can simply copy this SQL code and you can apply those SQL code again and the same table will be created. Okay, uh, so let's see, we save our table. And now you can see the teacher table has been created. Uh, if you expand the columns, you can see here the table has those columns and we have the constraints. So the uh, uh, teacher, we have primary key, we have less than five rule and also we have the unique check. And uh, if you have any other defined indexes, it will be created here. Uh, again, the primary key is always automatically indexed, but it's not showing here. Uh, you can also define the uh, rules and also triggers. Okay. 
Uh, so next, let's type some data. So let's say uh, right click the table. And also you can see you can edit or you can view the data. So let's say we want to view all the rows. Uh, you can see by default, it is right now it is empty. Okay. Uh, but you do have this pencil icon so that you can add to that rules. So if I click this one, uh, let me tap my uh, email and type my name. OK, my office. My interest. OK, and I'm teaching three classes this semester. So I just type three. OK. And on the top, you can see this icon that is save the data. So if I save the data, Oh, that didn't go through. Let me save it again. OK, so now you can see my data is not saved. OK, so I have one sing, uh, single record uh, talking about me. Um, let's see, let's try some constraints that we predefined. So for example, if I tap uh, my GME email again. And if I want to save it, no. Because uh, the it violates a lot of rules. But first, you can see the name is required. Um, so let's say we provide a new name. And still HS. Okay, and I leave the others as default. Uh, let's see if I can save it. So no, because in this case, first it violates the teacher primary key. So if I change my email to my Gmail. Okay, so now let's see will that work? Again, no, because the office is not unique. Okay, so uh, I violate the unique office rules. NGO. Okay, you can see that uh, they can prevent some. <laughs> uh, by defining those constraints, you can prevent some uh, errors like um, duplicate errors. But if if the people that did make mistake and those mistakes do not violate any constraints, you can still have those inaccurate data. So constraints is just one mechanism that try to make sure that your data are accurate, but it cannot guarantee 100% accuracy. So people still can make mistakes. So in this case, you can say, uh, I mistakenly take my office number here uh, because it, uh, uh, there's no way that database will know that what is my right office you know, right now. So they will still take this record. Okay, so that can be saved. Uh, we know that number of policies and those entries are not required, so it can be now. But what if I say I'm teaching seven classes? So what will happen? Look like you have type enter uh, to make sure that it's accepted. And I save my table. You can see, okay, it violates the constraint that you cannot have more than five. Okay, so now if I say I'm teaching four classes, okay, four classes, enter and save it. Okay, now this has been saved uh, correctly. Uh, you can also delete the records. So, for example, if I choose this one and I choose delete. And again, save. So now you can see that record has been saved. OK, uh, so that is uh, save those records. Again, you have following the instructions. So you have to create a more than, I think, 12 
records of all the IE professors, and also make sure you use the uh, the the right information from the website. Okay, so lastly, I want to show you that how different users can access your data. So remember that I save put all my data into my demo through my demo user account. Uh, so now if I check all the table with admin account. Uh, so admin is the account that only I have the access. Uh, looks like it's, it's slow. Okay, and I want to check. Okay, I want to see, okay, so what is in the demo schema and I open the tables. I can say, okay, the teacher table is there. So now if I view the records, you can see, I can see the same records. So through the uh, admin user account, because I am now I'm uh, accessing the table as admin administrator. So I can see all the records that the demo user typed. Okay, so that is our uh, lab one.